another episode of Straight No Chase Unfiltered, a grassroots community talk medium designed to be a voice of the voiceless, featuring various community members' opinions on spirituality, history, social organization, economic organization, political organization, creative production, and community ethos. Straight No Chaser Unfiltered is produced by the Royal Broadcasting Company, RBC, the voice of the voiceless, Straight No Chaser Unfiltered. And now, here's the host of Straight No Chaser Unfiltered, Gloria Winston. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Gloria Winston, and we want to welcome you back to Straight No Chaser. Our guest today is a lady with many, many hats, a lady I admire profusely. She's been in our community working tirelessly. Not only is she a paramedic, she's a realtor. She's currently Monroe County Legislator for the 27th District, but is now trying to vie for the city council seat that Adam McFadden will be vacating. With no further ado, I want to introduce you to Lachey Harris. Thank you. Hi, oh, I'm, I'm so humbled. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here as well. Good. We're glad to have you. <laughs> so tell me, first of all, what made you decide to run for city council? Um, well, as you know, I, I've lived in 19th Ward since 1999, but even before that, I lived there before as a child. So I grew up in the neighborhood and my heart is there. I've worked there and served there, um, of course, as a paramedic, going to calls and stuff. And then um, 19th Ward Community Association president and prior to that delegate. And right now I'm serving still as the chair of Square Fair. So we're getting ready for Square Fair this summer. So I look at all of those things. And then I had a conversation with Adam and you know, he, he said he would endorse me in this endeavor. So it made all, all the sense in the world to just move in that direction, um, to continue to, the work that has already been done by him. Um, and sh shall I say, the baton has been passed to me. Hopefully the community will co-sign it. Well, I don't see why they shouldn't. <laughs> now tell me this, um, you've been on the Monroe County Legislature how long now? Is this Since 2016. Since 2016. Yes. Okay. And one of the other hats you wear is paramedic. How yeah. long have you been in that field? Oh, 25 years. I just served 25 years December 13th wow. of this year. Wow. Or this past year, I'm sorry. All right. Yeah, so 25 years I've been in EMS. Um, I did not plan to be a paramedic, but I fell in love with medicine. Um, while I was pursuing my college education, I took an EMT course, and I just couldn't leave it. I was like, oh, this is it. I love it. <laughs> I love taking care of people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And the third hat? Oh, real estate? Oh, that was, um, that was a plan B that ended up being um, back in 2001. I was thrown in the back of the ambulance, severely injured, a back injury. And I was told that I could never go back to work. So I had herniated discs in wow. two different places. And I was like, not having it. So I was in physical therapy. But while I was in physical therapy, I was pursuing opportunities to do something else. So I found a scholarship that I applied for, for real estate. Um, it was an essay you had to write, uh, why you think you would win the scholarship. And I wrote the essay, I think it was like 500 words. Mm -hmm. I wrote the essay and I won the scholarship. So once I got the scholarship for full tuition for real estate school, and uh, it also included books, and then I paid for my, my license and everything on my own, um, I've been selling houses part-time ever since, and I end up going back to work, too. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> like I said, you're a lady of many, many hats. So I didn't plan, I didn't plan to do both. Um, it ended up being that God blessed me because I was like not giving up, you know, mm -hmm. on the, what the doctors told me. I was like, well, I'm going to make it happen some kind of way because mm -hmm. I got to pay my bills. <laughs> All right, that's a good way to feel. Yeah. I know many people that have said to doctors, okay, you've spoken, now let's see what God has to say about it. That's exactly how I felt. Now, there's another hat I forgot to mention. 
Because uh, you and your husband are running a newspaper now in, yes. in the 19th Ward called the Southwest Tribune. Yes, um, part owner of Southwest Tribune. Um, my husband is a journalist just like yourself. He has passion to serve the community as a journalist, as a community journalist, because um, he feels as though there was just a hole left um, in the Southwest region and just with certain stories. Um, there are other newspapers out there, but he just felt like there was a certain niche that he wanted to carve out for himself and for the community to see. So um, that's my husband, and I support his endeavors. So he basically is the operations of the of the newspaper, and I pre pretty much back him up. All right, <laughs> all right. And how long have you been publishing now? Um, we're going on, I think, our actually it's 2000. Actually, it's the same year we got married. 2017 oh, wow. is that the year that we. Um, started the newspaper. Mm -hmm. So tell me, when you're elected, because mm -hmm. I'm confident you will get elected mm -hmm. to city council, what is your vision or what are some of the things you plan to change or want to see changed in the 19th Ward? I want to help residents deal with the changing um, of our neighborhood where the rent is going up. We got to find a way to support our people who people who would like to say neighborhood that's already there, um, renters, um, our elderly population, even of our even some of our population that may be handicapped or they may be disabled, should I say, um, we got to find a way to help them stay. Um, find a way to help those of them who are renters to become homeowners. Kind of encourage that as well, and then also find new ways to continue the development of our neighborhood. Um, I'm so happy that the City Council has already done a lot of development already, but we need to continue that process. I should not have to leave my neighborhood to go to Pittsford or, or even Chilite to go shopping with certain mm -hmm. things. So we should have all that stuff right here in the 19th Ward, but with responsible development. So we can keep the neighborhood feeling. So it shouldn't be too commercialized, but it should have something available for us to walk to, bike to, or even drive to. Right, right. Now, um, I remember back in the day, <laughs> I've been here a while, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, the first black family that ever moved into the 19th Ward were Alice Young and her family. Oh, okay. Are you aware of that, Dr. No, Young? I did not know that. Yeah, that was news. Yeah, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that her family was the first black family in the 19th Ward when I was a kid, and then there were people that followed. Uh, like Dr. Jordan and my minister at the time, Dr. Whitaker from Mount Olivet Baptist Church. Right. Now, there's a recent controversy circulating, and yes. I think there's some legislation that's hit the floor regarding mayoral control of the Rochester City School District. Yes. How do you feel about that? I feel like um, the mayoral control is something that I'm not sure how that would look to be honest, for our community. I do know that our district is in peril and we have to do something. And if, if that legislation goes through, I mean, I would, I would support it because we would have no choice and we would have to find ways to support that legislation. But right now, um, I'm, I'm a current employee of the district. So I'm right now doing my part in trying to make the district better. Um, I'm over the Career Pathways to Public Safety Program. And it's a program to help young people um, get get opportunities in public safety jobs, fire, police, EMS, as well as um, 911. And I'm doing everything I can to make sure we give those babies opportunities in those fields. Um, and that's something that's really needed um, because I could tell you when I started EMS, I was the only black female that was on the ambulance. Actually, it was the first black female paramedic in this county. Mm -hmm. And that's sad. So, there's a program, obviously, that you're over in the district. How do students get involved? How do they get recruited to your program? We're working on recruitment right now. I'm so happy that you asked me to come here. We're working on recruitment right now. They can contact me um, directly. I can give you my phone number is 236-4216. I can give you my email. is Lashay, L-A-S-H-A-Y, dot Harris, at rcfdk 12org And I will get you an application. Um, we are looking to get 11th and 12th graders in this program. We definitely are not going to be able to take everybody because these pathways are for students who are, we're gonna be putting into the academies right after high school. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're gonna be making decent income 
right after high school um, if we can get them through. So we're going to be, I wouldn't say selective, but there is a criteria that the students will have to meet. Uh, GPA, attendance, and of course their parents' support as well. And then they would have to write an essay. Good, so this will be the first year for it? No, it's not. Oh. We've been, I've been involved with this program. This is going on our sixth year. Oh, wow. Yes, so the City School District um, and the City of Rochester has a partnership um, with this program. And um, I'm excited. Um, because um, I'm new to the program and it's, it's something that we've been working on and despite all the perils that you hear, these are the things that people don't hear about that right. are going that's positive in the district. Right. Positive and also it's like you're fixing what wasn't broken because I'm, I'm a product of the city school district. So am I. There have been many discussions mm -hmm. around even if kids didn't want to go to high school, there were opportunities available. I mean, go to college. There were opportunities available to them to come out of high school with a skill. And that just sounds like a wonderful program. I hope that, I, I wish you the best and success, of course. So how many students have you actually had graduate from the program? Well, I can tell you that last year um, we had uh, I'm trying to remember the numbers because at the time I was not the administrator. <laughs> um, I would say we had at least 30 students last year graduate from the program. And in years past it was more. Last year our numbers dipped a little bit because there was a change in administration. But we're expecting to get all of our students through this year, um, all of our seniors, and I'm excited. Um, what's really most exciting for me is they don't have to go to college to mm -hmm. get this kind of money. They're coming out of high school, going into the academies or into these pathways for additional training mm -hmm. to get them the jobs. And then when they're finished, they can make anywhere from $35,000 or more wow. with benefits. Mm -hmm. So I, I look at the, the people who choose or anyone who chooses to go to college, they spend all that money in college and they barely get the $35,000 a year as an entry level position. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's a win-win for the student and the families if they get those jobs. That's wonderful. That's good Talk about hear. a pathway out of poverty. So mm -hmm. I'm excited about that. Um, and then it's not just me. It's a, it's a great team. I work with some wonderful people. Um, I have a wonderful boss um, over at RCSD. And, you know, we've been doing whatever we can to make sure we open these pathways up to teens mm -hmm. uh, as a choice. Um, and then the other thing is... Um, at least for those students who choose this pathway, you know, even if they want to still go to college, they can. It's wow. not like you, you're stuck or being a cop. You can still um, go to school while you're working in law enforcement or you can go to school while you're working as a fire department as well. Now, where <laughs> are the classes held and how often? The classes is Monday through Friday. It's held at RELC campus building. It's, a, it's not on City School District campus. And it's housed out of REOC at 161 Chestnut Street. And um, we're Monday through Friday. And we have the students in the early part of the morning. So the very first period, we have them. Um, mm -hmm. The first part of the morning, and then they get bused from our location to their home school when they're finished with us. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's really wonderful news. <laughs> Could you give us your phone number? And your email address again, please, for our the audience. 585-236-4216. And my email is Lachey Harris, Harris at rcsd. Dot, I mean, rcsdk12.org. I got to remember that. <laughs> and the name of the program again? It's Career Pathways, the Public Safety Program. Wow. That's, that's really great news. It really Thank is. you. It is. Now tell me this, in terms of uh, back to politics again. Uh -huh. um, if you had your druthers, okay, would you um, consider moving on to a state level or federal position at some point Ooh, in time? You're really packing it on today. Yeah. <laughs> That's my I, job. <laughs> um, I can tell you that I have been asked that question and right now I cannot focus on anything else but Rochester mm -hmm. um, because I, I could I'm one to feel as though we have so much work here to do we have a lot of work to do and we have colleagues and my colleagues in government we all have lots of work to do and I can't even imagine I'm on something else right now and I think that um, 
until we get some of the things done, like get education going for our students and our neighborhoods together, you know, everything's not going to always be ever going to be perfect, but I really believe that we can get things better than what it is right now. I agree with you mm -hmm. wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. Now, um, to your knowledge, because the other field that you work in that I find interesting and that could be lucrative if someone's focused is, of course, the real estate. Yes. Are there opportunities and things? What would you recommend to a young person that wants to become a realtor? Oh, there's awesome opportunities as realtors, especially right now. The housing market is booming. Um, we, like right now, I have a couple, we're looking for them a house and we're having a hard time because it's low stock. So it's booming on the, on the side of when you do sell a house for a seller, mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of bidding, there's a lot of bidding wars going on. So most likely the houses will sell over the market value or over the asking price mm -hmm. as well because there's not enough houses but a lot of buyers. So it all depends on how you want to, you know, serve your clients. If you want to serve your clients as a seller, you know, where you want to be the person to represent the sellers, um, then yes, there's money. But if you're going to be working with just strictly buyers, you're going to have a hard time finding a house for them. And it all depends on what, what population your buyers are, you know. Um, and then there's investment, there's commercial real estate. There's so many opportunities. I love it. I, I would love to do that full time. Um, but I'm just so entrenched into what I'm doing right now with the educational piece that um, I'm not going to just make that switch yet. Mm -hmm. um, I'll probably do that later, <laughs> later in life. Okay. And... Just say I'm fresh out of high school. I've decided that I don't want to go to college. What would I need to do to become a realtor in oh, New York State? They have courses um, that they offer at the Greater Rochester Real Estate Association. They have courses they offer there. and Or you can take courses online. There are a, a numerous of companies that you can research that, that offer the online courses. Um, they range from anywhere from a hundred and some odd dollars to four hundred and some odd dollars online. Um, I know the courses at the Greater Rochester Real Estate Association, I'm not really sure how much they are now because I, again, I didn't pay for mine, so, but I know you got to pay for the course and you got to take care of your books as well. And then there's also a fee for the state, um, the state licensure application. So I think it's about $65 and you pay for that. Um, and that lasts for two years. Every two years, you have to recertify. 22.5 hours. So it's very easy um, to get that certification or, so I say, the licensure. The hardest part is getting your startup money. You probably would want to have at least a couple thousand to three thousand dollars startup for marketing. You know, you need to have your business cards, signs, you know, just to be able to market yourself. Today is a lot easier. So that three thousand dollars can go a long way. You know, because now we have all the social media and all these other things available right. to us that we didn't have when I started. Well, that's good to know. See, I was under the impression <laughs> that you could go get sponsored by a realtor and they would take care of that fee. So that fee is on the person becoming a realtor. Well, there may be agencies that do sponsor, mm -hmm. but I can tell you that when I started, it no. really wasn't so the case. Um, I do know that when you do um, pay for the, the fees yourself and you do all of that set up and then you get licensed, you do have agencies that will kind of court you mm -hmm. and then they will help you with some of those startup costs. Like, like they will pay for your business cards or some of your signs. It all depends on what agency you work for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I want you to leave <laughs> us, our young people in particular that I hope are watching, some words of wisdom about whatever career moves and plans that they have. I just think that it's important that young people should never let people tell them no. Don't ever let anyone tell them no, you can't do this or you can't be this. You have to keep trying and you have to reach for the stars. Um, and I think that you got to want it. It's got to be all inside you. And um, it's there. You just got to make sure you keep 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 trying, don't give up. Um, I think about what made me be who I am today. I had mentors, always have somebody in your ear telling you things that are positive about yourself and, 
if they're not telling you stuff that's positive, then they're not somebody you want to be around. Mm -hmm. So mentors is very much key. And it's not just one mentor, it's multiple. Mm -hmm. Great advice. Mm -hmm. Well, we want to thank you, Lachey, for thank stopping you. by. And um, I'm sure the next time we see her, we'll be calling her Councilwoman mm -hmm. Lachey Harris. Thank you again for watching Straight No Chaser. We're on every Sunday at 6 o'clock. Please tune in and thank you again for your support. And please leave comments. We love feedback. Have a great day.